I'm Danica Lohr, and this is Lit Happens, your celebration of the literary arts here in Saskatchewan. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome Carla Bradick. Carla, welcome to Lit Happens. Thank you. It's nice to be here. So you're a poet. Yes. And have you been writing poetry for a long, for a long time? Yes. I've, I've been writing... I can remember as a kid, my whole goal was to get published in the pages of the Western Producer. And when I was 9, 10, and I went by the pen name of Teddy Bear. And uh, I think I was successful once or twice. And after that, I just kept writing. I wrote, uh, while I was raising my family, I would write uh, children's stories and songs and poems and, yeah, more poems. When I was about 40, my girlfriend Noreen, she said, why don't you try and publish a book? And Thistledown uh, published my first book. And that was great. And so, with the poetry, what, where do you draw your inspiration? From the wild. Uh, I, li I live near Big River. We live in the country on the shore of a lake. And I, sp I try to spend as much time as possible outdoors. And, and that's where my comfort comes from and my solace and my inspiration. And when I'm out, I... Thing, things kind of gel and, and come together and work out. I, I, sort of everything in my life gets related back to something in the wild. Oh, wonderful. So tell me a little bit about the new book. Uh, the, the new book, sort of, I ended up having so many poems that needed to go somewhere. I thought, okay, it's time for another book. And pulling them together, trying to figure out um, how, to, how to put it together. And I ended up putting it together in sort of six loose uh, sections. And I say that they're loose because I, I didn't want strong divisions. I didn't want a divider page. And that's because I don't believe that our lives are divided. I believe our lives flow one person into the other person, youth into old age, and, and we flow in and out of buildings and cars. And, and so I wanted the book to reflect that. And so I, I have poems that are um, either from my childhood or reflections on a childhood memory. And those are in there mixed with the poems of sort of right now. And some of the poems in that book are from even before my first book was published. And then some are quite a bit more recent. And, and still connected to the wild and to the outdoors. They you. are. not The poem isn't so overtly um, about the wilderness as the first book. The first book was kind of a in, in praise of all those things and, and questioning all those things. But this book is definitely questioning um, the human the human interaction and and um, the the searching, the looking for things. And what was the title of the first book? The first book was called Carrying the Sun. And this the second book is called A Map in My Blood. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the title to this book. Okay. It's it's an interesting it's it's a brings all kinds of beautiful images, but tell me a little bit about the title. I, for one thing, I'm happy that I finally found such a good title. And um, because when I sent the manuscript to the publisher, to Thistledown, it didn't have a title. And I uh, took some thinking, and actually what prompted me to find the title was the marketing people from Thistledown requested that uh, I tell them what the book was about. And that was a bit of a challenge, so I had to go through the book, and, and I realized that it, the the biggest theme in it is searching. And I was pleased to find that because that's how the poems had felt, but also um, it made me think of maps, and I love maps. And and I think a map, while it gives us so much information, it, it's got the, the rivers and the highways and maybe the elevations on it, um, there's a lot that isn't on a map. And and that's the way it is with the poems in the book. There's, there's a lot of... Um, images and ideas that are expressed, but there's a lot that isn't, like what the probability and the possibility. And, and uh, so I was happy to come up with it. But there's always a string that's leading you somewhere with a map, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where else could we go? What else <laughs> could we experience, right? Yeah. And so are, uh, can you tell us a little bit about some of the places that the poems take us in this book? The Right at the beginning, the poem takes us back to... Um, some childhood places. Um, one is, uh, there's a quick image of uh, me being in the park with my girlfriend on a bicycle. 
and uh, the street that I lived on being paved and the, the big equipment. And it was interesting, my, the street my mom lives on is being paved, was paved just last week. And uh, so all that big equipment, it was like my poem come to life <laughs> again, right? So that was nice. Um, takes us uh, to our lake, um, watching my kids swim and, uh, and deal with the rocks in the lake and the leeches and um, where else do we go? Uh, places around Big River Town, uh, walks through the bush. Yeah, there's a variety. And does it, it takes us physical places, but does it take us to emotional places as well? Yes. Yeah, it, it visits the, um, some of the questions that, that um, events that as a child I experienced and then, and then sort of rethinking them and, and reconsidering that in terms of maybe family or friendship and the, the, those ties that bind. And uh, also to the, as a, as a parent, as a partner, sort of the things that you you consider and where you go with that. And I probably touch on every emotion there is. There's some happy poems, some sad. There's, there's a poem I wrote that it was more of a, um, a blue kind of poem. And reading it, um, reading it now, I see it more as hope, as that new, there's always as something goes away, something new is always moving in. And there's some angry poems and, and uh, frustration, all of it. Well, one of the beautiful things about um, poetry books is listening to the poets read their read their work. Do you do you enjoy live readings of your work? I do, I do. I like I like the opportunity to um, read the poem how I think it should be expressed, um, and and get some feedback from the audience. See what they think. Is it is it working? Is it clicking? And are they getting are they getting it? Kind of thing. And, yeah. and do you think that the audience for poetry, the buyers of the books, do you think that they should read poetry out loud as well? I do. I do very much. Um, it's, I know I am always reading things out loud, whether it's poetry or fiction or nonfiction. It, it seems to sink in better into my mind. But it also, especially with the poetry, you get, you get the song behind it, you get the rhythm behind it. And um, that's a big part of poetry. Well, I think that's fantastic. And I think we're going to have to end on that because our time is through for today. <laughs> Carla Bradick, thank you so much for being on Lit Happens. Thank you, Danica. I'm Danica Lohr. You can find more episodes of Lit Happens on YouTube by going to Shaw TV Saskatoon. You can contact me on Facebook or Twitter or by going to danicalohr at gmail.com. Mm -hmm.